one and we're recording yasmin thank you so much for joining me oh uh, no problem it's my pleasure jazakallah for having me it's my honor so uh first i want to talk to you about your books so you've released reclaim your heart and love and happiness and going through your youtube content you have a lot of videos on the topic of love such as on uh marriages and one video that I particularly like and I really recommend to anyone who is watching is what is love and you kind of talk about the pernicious effects of when you love the wrong things so uh, how did this come to be such an important topic for you that it's kind of influenced your books and a lot of your content yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so start out. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wassalat wassalam ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbi ajma'in. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul uqtata min lisani yafqahu qawli. Um, I think it really started out from a from a personal journey, and this is something I I cover a lot in in Reclaim Your Heart, especially the first chapter. Uh, the first chapter of Reclaim Your Heart is kind of really personal. Uh, it's called Why Do People Have to Leave Each Other? And in this chapter, I talk about my own personal journey, my own personal struggles I'd say um, I remember when I was when I was typing it um, I was actually sitting in a coffee shop and I was just typing and I was actually thinking to myself I can't believe I'm writing these things like I it was that it was kind of that personal and I was like wow. sort of uncomfortable with 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 being that honest but but I, I just I wrote it anyways and I think that that was that was something that really resonated with people because I talk about my own uh struggles with attachments essentially mm -hmm. and 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 so when you're asking about like why like uh you know wh where did i start you know that that topic or that journey mm -hmm. i think it was really personal because i was the type of person ever since you know since i was younger uh, i would probably be classified as a highly sensitive person you know this new term that 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 one psychologist had come up with uh and it's it's like Basically, I would become attached to things very easily, uh, but specifically attached to people. And when I would be attached to people, it would be not necessarily in a healthy way. Uh, and so as I kind of learned through my own relationships, but it, it was like kind of like I learned the hard way through uh, disappointment, pat like sort of consistent patterns of disappointment and and um, things not working out, etc. Uh, and then I. Uh, I think as I started to learn, I became passionate about, about teaching that as well. Yeah, that's awesome. And you your work has touched uh, millions of people. You have a lot of engagement from people from, you know, all over the world. I saw when I was following you on Instagram, I think maybe I have like 40 or 50 different people who are following you. So obviously mm -hmm. your work has touched a lot of people. So uh, you have your background in psychology and journalism and uh, as you kind of studied Islam and, you know, you put it together in this really unique message, when did you start putting it out there and having people, you know, come to you and, you know, putting you in the status of being an Ustad? Well, I mean, I, I, I don't necessarily think of myself as um, any specific status. I, I, I kind of just consider myself a teacher. And I think that I've been, I've had a passion for teaching since I was a kid, <laughs> I guess. Uh, which is interesting. Uh, when I was in high school, for example, I started to have a passion for Dawah. Uh, mm -hmm. And at that time, <clears throat> I was like, uh, you know, like I, I went to a public school, right? So uh, we would have a, a, a class, you know, we would have like a, like, a, like a segment in our, in our history class or in our mm -hmm. social studies class about Islam. Um, so, you know, I would sometimes like give a presentation or something uh, to the class. And then I would, I, you know, I started to sometimes give presentations to other classes about Islam. And then I would, um, I, I had a passion for even giving presentations at churches. So I was doing this from when I was a teenager. Wow. Uh, and, and it was just something that I just felt uh, like it was natural, uh, like a, just a natural thing that I, that I did. Um, it wasn't so much like I was, so, so one thing I find is that like the conversations that I might have uh, say if I'm being uh, interviewed on a podcast or I'm giving a lecture aren't very different than the conversations I might have with my children or with my husband or with my sister. So mm -hmm. it's it doesn't feel like it's some it doesn't feel like a job. Um, it doesn't feel like uh, like a career. It's just an ex it's just kind of an extension of of what I what I am and 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 what I experience. 
so so I mean I think like I said it's like it, it was something just kind of natural teaching uh, sharing expression uh, about the things that matter most to me it's very difficult for me to talk about something I don't care about um, so like if I get a topic and I I know that I either don't feel passionate about it or I don't feel like I know if how do I put it if I don't feel like I have any kind of personal uh, connection to that topic or any personal knowledge I'll 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 like tr decline you know I won't try to talk about something that I that I don't feel like a personal connection to okay awesome um one of your lines in a video that it, it really stuck with me and I found myself uh, like repeating this line is whatever you love most in life is your master mm. and I, I find that really insightful I have a friend who he spent most of his life, life as an atheist and then he after maybe like 15 years of atheism and during that time he was actually depressed uh, eventually he kind of verged into uh, being agnostic before he eventually became monotheist and being convinced that there's a god and uh, now you know alhamdulillah he doesn't take any antidepressants and one oh. thing he said to me is that there's a hole inside the heart he says the only thing that's going to fill that hole is a connection with god no matter how many drugs or alcohol big problems in scotland uh, no matter how much you know <laughs> you know craving like the attention of the opposite sex or status or instagram followers it's never going to fill that hole and he says filling that hole for him kind of like cured his depression so when i heard you say that line of whatever you love most in life is your master really resonated with me so what was your journey like of uh, discovering that and like yeah it's actually interesting i have a chapter in reclaim your heart called on filling the inner hole mm -hmm. <laughs> and and that's exactly the the thesis is that it, in it, exactly like your friend said that that we we do have a hole um there is a vacancy in us and it is created uh with a divine purpose and, and the reason it's the same reason why we feel for example we feel hunger why do we feel hunger uh well if we didn't feel hunger then we wouldn't be driven to eat and then we might starve to death and so that that need is actually a driving force and that 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 hole or that vacancy is in fact designed by god as a driving force to bring us to god and the problem is and you know to answer your question about what you know why did i why am i interested in this and why do i teach it it's because it's part of my own personal journey to fill my own hole Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and what are the things that I tried to use to fill it? And, you know, what, what did I experience along the way? But that, that hole itself, um, what, when we go wrong is when we try to fill that vacancy with, as you mentioned, other than God, when we try to fill it with physical pleasure, uh, with alcohol, with drugs, some of us try to fill it through social media, through technology, yep. through our careers, you know, status, feeling feeling important, um, self-worship, right? There's a lot of self-worship, especially in the, in, the, in the modern culture that we live in now. We've moved away from sort of uh, that communal, like living for others, our family, you know, type of thing to now just, it's, it's all about me. And it's mm -hmm. like one extreme to another in, in, in some senses. Um, but that all of those things will never fill that vacancy. They'll never sure. fill that hole. And your friend definitely came to the right conclusion that, that everything he was chasing wasn't going to uh, fill that. But it is there. Uh, and it is there by design uh, to drive us towards uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One other thing that's very interesting, and my teacher, um, he, he, he always say, says, is that if you look at the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every single attribute of Allah uh, is actually, it's, it's actually connected to a need that a human being has. Every attribute. Uh, if, you, if you look at all the needs, if you, you know, you were, if you were to examine every single possible need that humans have, there is an attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that fulfills that need. And that's wow. just, that's, yeah, subhanAllah. SubhanAllah, um, wow. So, so everything, everything, you know, the need to be loved, the need to be recognized, you know, even that, even that, um, you know, the need to be seen. Uh, so, mm -hmm. so if you look at the need to be recognized, um, the need to be appreciated, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ash-shakur, ash-shakur, the one who, who thanks and appreciates, um, uh, the, the need to be seen, he is al-basir, he is the one who sees all, right? Um, you know, the, the, need, the need to be heard, he, he is as-samia, he is the one who hears all. Uh, you know, the need to be loved. He's al-wadud. 
he's the source of love of all love so it's like <laughs> subhanallah that there is a divine purpose um and and a divine design in uh -huh. our needs designed in our needs to push us towards the uh you know al basir and as samia and 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 al wadud that that need is actually intended to push us towards the only source of of what can fulfill that need subhanallah that's awesome i really love what your teacher said um Give, knowing that it gives another wisdom of when you actually look through the 99 names of Allah and you see that uh, other meaning there. Yeah, uh, absolutely. A, a part of evidence in people being incomplete is I saw this study and it said this was done in the UK and it was, there was a sample, quite a large sample of people between 16 and 35. And they mm -hmm. found that 75% of these people are suffering from. Uh, depression, uh, anxiety. Well, what the, the main cause of it was they were asking these people is, do you believe your life has any purpose? And 75% of the people answered, no, I believe my life doesn't have a purpose. And mm. when you fall into that, well, you, you find yourself another purpose. And the purpose people tend to get is, well, the purpose of life is to have more enjoyment than pain and that enjoyment you they can buy that it's you know it's uh, it's the alcohol it's the drugs it's the uh, pursuing the opposite sex and uh, you know I've, I've worked with these people and you know you, you're working and all day they're looking at the clock and it's, oh, it's monday it's tuesday they're miserable then it gets to friday and it's that you know um what can I say, that ecstasy of, you know, Friday night, Saturday, then they have to recover on Sunday just to do this rinse and repeat. And uh, you can yeah. see the neg that pernicious effect it has on them, like it's wearing away at them, like you can tell there's something missing. So you've given a really beautiful analogy on the, the kind of secular side, but how about, you know, your background as a psychologist? Uh, like, do you see that? Yeah. There's like, mm -hmm. how does that manifest in people that uh, missing that connection with their creator yeah absolutely i mean it's it's complete i think it's completely connected to the the that feeling of of not having a purpose right it mm -hmm. it, it leads to depression it leads to anxiety because uh you know if you feel as though why am i here you know what what where why am i why was i if you feel like like there it's meaningless right your life is meaningless your you know, as you said, you, you get up, repeat, you know, Monday again, and then it's just going through the motions with no purpose. You know, there was actually, uh, interestingly enough, uh, the longest longitudinal study on happiness was done by Harvard University. And they looked at these people over a, a period of, of several decades. Uh, and, and, and it was very, very interesting because what they found is that they, they looked at people from like all different types of uh, backgrounds. Uh, mm -hmm. different socioeconomic backgrounds, different uh, experiences, right? And, and they, they, they were studying what ended up leading to happiness or well-being, right? Which, which factors? And what's so powerful about it is that it had absolutely nothing to do with money. Uh, they found that it had nothing to do with like, like their success in their career. Um, it, it was not material. It was not um, career-based but it had to do with the, uh, more so with the meaningfulness of their relationships, okay? And I was thinking about like, you know, there was this TED talk talking, you know, I think it might've been one of the researchers who was giving this TED talk. And he says something really interesting. He said that there was uh, a survey uh, of millennials and they asked millennials like, what is your uh, greatest goal, right? What's your greatest goal in life? And the vast majority of them said to, to make money, to be rich. And then, uh, and then close, the, the close second was to be famous. <laughs> so it was just interesting that, that these are the things that people believe will give them happiness, right? Being rich and being famous. And it sounds cliche, but this is literally what people believe. Uh, and yet the actual research in psychology finds that there is no association between the two, that 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 the uh, their wealth and their fame did not actually lead to to happiness at all in their in oh. this in this really like this the longest study on happiness that's ever been done. Well, it reminds me of a Jim Carrey quote, and Jim Carrey says, 
I wish everyone could try being rich and famous so they could realize it's really not all that. Exactly, exactly. It's, it's, it's like, um, I, I heard this quote once that's, um, some people are so poor, all they have is money. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. I shall yeah. Love. yeah. Okay. Um, so a bit about where can people learn from you and uh, read more of your content? What social media are you on? Where can people uh, find out more about you? Sure. So I'm, I, you know, as mentioned, I have um, two books right now, Reclaim Your Heart and Love and Happiness. They're both available online, Amazon and other sites. Uh, and right now I've just launched uh, a TV channel called uh, YMTV or Yasmin Mujahid TV. And the thing that's really unique about this channel is that it it gives exclusive access to members to content that isn't available anywhere else. So, you know, throughout the last 10 years or so, I've been traveling, touring, uh, teaching seminars, teaching classes throughout the world. And um, that content has been recorded, but it has never been released. Uh, and so this is the first time that it's being released. It's the first time uh, where people have access to it. And um, as well as the other thing that's really unique about about this uh, platform is that I have exclusive online sessions regularly just with members. So I'll, and I do a lot of them. So I'll do about four a month. Uh, so every week I'm, I'll have a live session. I'm also doing live Q and A's. So that's in addition to having all this access to the content. And they also have access to my new content. So that's the other thing that's really cool is that, uh, you know, whenever I'm doing something as I'm going you know, and I do new content, uh, new interviews, new classes, uh, new podcasts and stuff that that's also available there. Uh, so that's kind of like one place where, where you get a lot of that uh, exclusive access. And then I'm also on Facebook, uh, Instagram, Twitter, I guess I'm, you know, I'm, I, I have a page apparently on TikTok, but I, it's, it's my yeah. content. But I, it's it's my content but it's not, it's not um, you, okay my it's sister not my yeah my, it's not on my phone my sister follows that page <laughs> oh really okay yeah okay, yeah cool. <laughs> i've been watching that page quite a bit it's good because um it's well you have this on your instagram as well what i love is it's, it's short form content because see like my uncle's generation they had to read books like my generation yeah. like you know we yeah. got youtube videos yeah. And I, I can watch Zarka Knight or Naman Ali Khan for 20, 30 minutes. It's cool. But my sister's generation, they don't want that. It's, it's you exactly. know, like the way we didn't want the books. Uh, for them, it's TikTok videos and it's like Instagram videos that are like a minute long. And Exactly. Past yeah. 60 seconds, that's it. You know, so <laughs> they've made them. Yeah, they, they you know, may Allah reward them. They, they, they've cut, you know, a lot of my, my content into kind of bite size and released it that way. Awesome. I'm going to put all of your links in the bio for this so people can find you. But just thanks so much for joining me on this. It was really nice to meet you. Well, it's been my pleasure. Jazakallah khair. And uh, may Allah, uh, you know, allow you to continue to, to put together good content yourself. And and I hope that, um, you know, it's, it's, it's an opportunity. You know, this, it, this whole lockdown has been sort of a, a blessing in disguise in some, oh, some sure. regard because we have a lot more online content now. So alhamdulillah. Sure. Thank you yeah. so much. Thank you very much.